Ready for your end, Whis. <laughs> Take this! <laughs> Damn you, Beerus! It looks like you will finally come after Xenosama. Are you ready? I was born ready to fight! <laughs> hey, I am Gokui, and the show starts now. This is Absolute Cinema! Hey, how's it going? Just here to remind you to click the like button, subscribe here to the channel, then hit the bell so you don't miss any videos and stay well inside in our entire universe of Dragon Ball. Without further ado, let's get started. After the meal at Beerus's palace, Gunku thought it was time to reveal a secret he had kept hidden until that moment. He called Whis to a more private area, away from the others. Whis, there's something I've never shown to anyone, not even Vegeta or Gohan. It's a technique I developed during my training on planet Beerus. Whis, intrigued, nodded for Goku to continue. During my transformation into an Ozaru, I discovered a way to maintain control over this immense energy. Instead of being consumed by it. It's a technique I call Super Controlled Ozaru. Oh. Super Controlled Ozaru, you say? Well, that is fascinating, Goku. Can you show me how it works? Goku nodded and began to concentrate. His energy began to slowly increase. But instead of transforming into a gigantic, uncontrollable Ozaru, Goku remained in his base form, while in a golden aura surrounding him. This is my technique. I learned to extract the power of the Ozaru without losing my rationality. This way, I can use this power when necessary, without losing control. Oh, that is truly remarkable, Goku. This technique could be the key to dealing with powerful threats without having to resort to more extreme transformations. Keep developing this skill. It would be very useful in the future. <laughs> Absolutely, Whis. I'm always looking for ways to become stronger and protect those I love. Thus, Goku and Whis continue their training, further exploring the controlled Super Ozaru's potential and keeping a close eye on what the future held. Vegeta, observing the interaction between Goku, Whis, and the revelation of the controlled Super Ozaru, decided to share a discovery with Beerus. He approached the God of Destruction, keeping a serious expression. Lord Beerus, 
I don't know if Kakarot has already told you, but we Saiyans, when we look at the moon, we can achieve a powerful form called Ozaru. It's a transformation that multiplies our strength several times. Ozaru, you say? I don't remember anything like that. Vegeta explained how, when looking at the full moon, Saiyans transformed into gigantic golden monkeys, completely losing their reason and becoming an uncontrollable force. It's an incredible power, but with great risk. In this form, we Saiyans lose our reason. We go out of control and attack everything around us. But Kakarot, he discovered a way to control this energy without losing rationality. He called this Controlled Super Ozaru. So he controlled the Super Ozaru. Is that really possible? Yes, Kakarot is unique at that. He always finds a way to surpass his limits. <laughs> Who would have thought that a transformation that usually turns it into savage beasts could be controlled? Hmm, interesting, Vegeta. Maybe I should ask Goku to show me that too. It seems these Saiyans always have surprises in store. In this way, knowledge about the Saiyans' ability to transform into Ozaras and Goku's discovery of control in this form further intrigued Beerus opening the way for new possibilities of the training and power development. Goku, after revealing the controlled Super Ozaru technique, was thoughtful about Whis's proposal. The angel always looking for ways to improve the potential of Warriors suggested. Goku, since you've managed to control the Ozaru's power, what do you think about trying to improve this technique even further? If I can make your tail grow back, you'll have another powerful tool in your arsenal. Goku looked at Whis, pondering the idea. Prospect of exploring new frontiers of power excited him, but he knew the risks involved. Even controlling the Ozaru, the transformation still carried with it the instinctive and savage nature of common Ozaru. Whis, do you think I... Can I actually manage to control this completely? Goku asked, quite worried. <laughs> With your track record, Goku, I think we can give it a try. Training is the key, and you've already proven yourself to be a quick learner. <laughs> yeah, come on, Whis. I want to see how far I can take this power. Whis, using his angelic powers, made Goku's tail begin to grow back. The warrior felt energy flowing into that part of his body, rekindling a long-forgotten feeling. With determination in his eyes, Goku was ready to another challenge on his never-ending path to surpassing his own limits. Goku, feeling his tail growing back, couldn't help but smile as he remembered his childhood. That tail was an important part of his identity as a Saiyan full of adventures and discoveries. Watching the tail return into his full form, Goku couldn't contain his excitement. He remembered the days when he was just a Saiyan child, training and adventuring with Gohan, his grandpa, and his friends. The tail was a striking feature, bringing with it not only the power of the Ozaru, but also memories of its journey over the years. Wow, I haven't had this for so long. <laughs> Looks like it brought backs to you, Goku. Yeah, definitely. And now, I'm ready to see how far I can take this control Super Ozaru. Whis, still smiling, began to guide Goku in his training, exploring the limits of this new ability. Goku, with his tail wagging behind him, was ready for another chapter in his journey of overcoming and discoveries. The path to mastering this newly awakened form lay before him, full of challenges and promises of ever greater power. Whis, with a smile on his face, raised his hand, and in the sky of planet Beerus, an artificial moon began to take shape. Its rays of light illuminated the night scene, creating an atmosphere conductive to unleashing Goku's Ozaru power. It's time to test, Goku. Let's see how much you can control this form, said Whis, watching Goku closely as the Saiyan's tail twitched in anticipation. Goku, with his eyes fixed on the artificial moon, 
felt the familiar sensation of his Saiyan power awakening. His transformation began, but something was different this time. It was as if Goku was more in tune with Yozaru, exerting total control of the immense energy that emerged. As the transformation unfolded, Goku did not lose his lucidity. His eyes, now a golden hue, reflected his determination to master this form. The artificial moon shined brightly, reflecting the glow of the Ozaru's power emanating from Goku. Whis, still smiling, noticed Goku's ability to maintain his consciousness in giant ape form. Oh! Impressive, Goku! It looks like you've really learned to control that power! As Goku explored the limits of the controlled Super Ozaru form, the planet Beerus witnessed a display of unparalleled strength and control. It was a new chapter in Goku's journey, now facing even more extraordinary challenges to become the most powerful warrior in the multiverse. Vegeta, with his crossed arms, watched Goku during his transformation into controlled Super Ozaru. A skeptical expression adorned the Saiyan Prince's face. Hmm. <laughs> I still can't believe Kakarot is reverting to his primate form. So hasn't he learned anything from all this training? Keeping a sharp look at Goku continued to demonstrate his control over the Ozaro. As Goku explored the nuances of this new form, Vegeta recalled the times when the Ozaro transformation was a blessing and a curse for Saiyans. Memories of the full moon and the battles fought amid the destruction caused by the primate form echoed in his mind. Maybe he's trying to prove something. Or maybe it's just another one of his crazy things to get stronger. Thought Vegeta, still maintaining his rigid posture. As Goku continued to display control over the Ozaru power, Vegeta could not deny that something extraordinary was happening. A flame of determination began to burn within him. <laughs> if Kakarot can master this, so can I! I won't be left behind, Kakarot! Vegeta, driven by rivalry and the constant desire to surpass Goku, began to consider the possibility of exploring his own limits, even if it meant facing the legacy of the Ozaru once again. With silver eyes, Goku was immersed in the unique fusion of controlled Super Ozaru and Ultra Instinct. His key was overwhelming as a bright aura surrounded him, highlighting his silver fur that shone like moonbeams. The ground of Planet Beerus shook under the intensity of this combined power. Vegeta, Whis, Beerus, and even Broly, who was training nearby, couldn't look away from Goku's imposing figure. The combination of the Ozaru and Ultra Instinct created a warrior whose presence transcended mere physical strength. Vegeta, despite his initial expression of disbelief, felt a twinge of excitement at this power. It was an astonishing manifestation of Saiyan strength that he had never imagined. Whis, the usually calm observer, frowned slightly. The combination of techniques that Goku was displaying was something that not even he had predicted. The angel reflected on the complexity and depth of the training Goku was undertaking. Beerus, normally indifferent to many situations, was genuinely intrigued. His eyes were fixed on Goku, and a spark of interest lit up in his being. This Saiyan is really pushing his limits. Broly, who was initially absorbed in his own training, felt the pressure of Goku's power and immediately stopped his activities. He turned his gaze towards the Silver Saiyan, curious to see what would come next. Goku, now in Ultra Instinct controlled Super Ozaru form, hovered over the planet Beerus. His eyes reflected a deep determination as he began to explore the limits of this new state. It was a fusion of powers that transcended everyone's expectations. And the universe was about to witness the magnitude of this Saiyan's evolution. With his eyes silver and his body enveloped in a dazzling aura, Goku began to regain consciousness. The power of the Ultra Instinct controlled Super Ozaru, although immense, was no longer an uncontrolled force. Goku was in complete control, his mind now attuned to the power he had unleashed. Whis watched closely, noticing the change in Goku's expression. 
Wee's subtle smile grew as he watched the Saiyan master this extraordinary form. He knew that Goku was about to reach a level beyond what any Saiyan had ever reached. Interesting. Not only has he harnessed the power of the Ozaru, but he has fused it perfectly with Ultra Instinct. This is new territory, Goku. Goku, now aware of his own existence, looked at Whis and smiled. His eyes, once silver like the moon, returned to their original color. The intense aura around him began to calm down, remaining present, but less fierce. Whis! Whis! I think I finally found the answer I was looking for. Whis, with his calm gaze, replied. It appears you have discovered how to balance to control every aspect of your power. But remember, Goku, there is still more to explore. This is just the beginning. <laughs> Who knew a Saiyan could reach such heights? All right, Goku. You had my curiosity. Now you have my attention. Show me what you're capable of. Beerus, watching all this, couldn't help but express his admiration. Goku, aware of his new state and the expectations around him, prepared to explore the limits of this enhanced form. The universe waited to see how this unprecedented power would unfold in the future challenges that lay ahead. Whis watched Goku with interest, noting that even in Super Ozaru form, the Super Saiyan maintained its consciousness and was seeking guidance. You have achieved a remarkable form, Goku. Now, the challenge is to channel that power efficiently and master it. Remember, balance is key. <clears throat> I get it, Whis. I feel incredible strength. But it feels like I can control it. It's important to find the balance between raw power and precision. Focus on your emotions, on controlling your key. Don't let the power dominate you. Instead, master that power. Goku, still in Super Ozaru form, closed his eyes for a moment, breathing deeply. He began to connect with the essence of his own key, seeking that balance that Whis mentioned. Whis, while watching Goku, noticed that the Saiyan was beginning to adjust his state. The aura around him responded to his intentions. Very well, Goku. Keep that up. When you feel you have complete control, try decreasing the size of your form. The key is to harmonize your power. Goku followed the instructions, focusing intensely. Gradually, the aura around him began to diminish and his Super Ozaru form began to contract. As the energy stabilized, Goku returned to a more controlled form. <laughs> That's right, Goku. You're learning fast. Now, test your skills in this more compact form. Feel how your body responds and how the power flows. Goku, now in his most controlled form, began to perform some movements and blows, exploring the capabilities of this unique fusion between Super Ozaru and Ultra Instinct. As Goku advanced into this new stage of power, Whis continued to guide him, preparing for an even greater challenge that awaited him. Whis, looking at Goku with a puzzled look, spoke. Very well, Goku. Now that you have managed to control this unique form, Let's move on to the next phase, shall we? <laughs> What's the next phase? <laughs> Whis, I'm ready for any challenge. Let's go! I'm ready! Oh, that was fast. <clears throat> now I want you to explore combining the power of Super Ozaru with Ultra Instinct. Try to incorporate the agility and intuition of Ultra Instinct with the massive strength of the Super Ozaru. Goku nodded, concentrating on merging the sensations of Ultra Instinct with Ozaru's transformed form. He began to move with surprising agility for a being of his magnitude. 
His Ultra Instinct enhanced three flexes, giving him an incredibly quick response. Yes, that's right, Goku. Precisely that. Feel the harmony between the two powers. If you can unite the massive strength of your Zaru with the dexterity of Ultra Instinct, you will have reached an extraordinary level of power. Complete this masterpiece. Goku continued to move, exploring the limits of this unique combination. He felt the pulsing energy within him, as if it were a symphony of varying powers. Remember, Goku, true mastery of this form will come when you can switch between the massive aspects of the Ozaru and the agility of Ultra Instinct with ease. Be ready of your movements and allow the energy to flow naturally. As Goku continued to test, the aura around him seemed to glow even more brightly, indicating the power of a fusion of these new two legendary forms. Whis, with his keen gaze, noticed that Goku was making significant progress. Very good, Goku, that's right! You are getting closer and closer to complete mastery of this unique technique. Keep doing that and soon you will be able to face challenges that goes beyond any imagination. The masterpiece is almost ready. The Warrior's Rest, Goku's Recovery. After the intense battle against Tenkai and the surprising transformation that saved Universe 7, Goku finds himself exhausted, barely able to keep his eyes open. <laughs> the cosmic energy absorbed and released left him in a physicality and mentality exhausted state. On the now calm battlefield, Vegeta, Gohan, Piccolo, and the other Z warriors approached Goku, worried about his condition, of course. They are his friends, after all. Gagrot, are you okay? Goku, with a tired smile, nods positively before succumbing to fatigue and falling to the ground, instantly falling asleep. <laughs> Father, he really gave it all. I've never imagined, never seen it like this before. It seems that Goku has surpassed his own limits once again. <laughs> Since our first battle, you just can't keep going with surprises. Right, Goku. The Z fighters decide to transport Goku back to Earth so he can rest properly. As Whis and Beerus watch from afar, Whis comments on the Saiyan's unique nature. Ah, oh, Saiyans always surprise me with their ability to recover and overcome challenges. Goku deserves his rest. After three days of deep sleep, Goku finally awakens. He finds himself at home, surrounded by friends and family, relieved to see him awake. Goku, you scared us! How it feels! Are you, are you okay, my little bit of a love? Chi Chi says, waking him up. Uh, I'm kind of sore, but I think I'll be fine. Thanks, Chi Chi. That fight was intense! <laughs> Goku stands up, stretches his arm and yawns, while everyone around him smiles in relief. You really did something really amazing back there, Kakarot. <laughs> well, I couldn't have done it without all of your help. Together, we're unstoppable. Hey, Dad, what exactly happened right now? No. Hey, Dad, what exactly happened back there? No. Ah. Uh, I don't have all the answers myself, my son. It really, like... It seems like things got a little out of control, but... In the end, everything worked out, right? <laughs> As Goku tells the others about his experiences during the battle, Earth recovers from the recent threat. The universe is once again in balance, thanks to the efforts and sacrifices of the Sea Warriors. And although Goku has achieved a new form of power, he knows that the multiverse holds many unknown challenges waiting to be faced. After the epic battle against Tenkai, Goku and Gohan find a quiet moment to discuss recent events and the changes taking place behind the scenes in the universe. Dad, we need to talk. No, of course, Gohan. What's in her mind? 
Gohan, with a serious look, mentions the rumor that has been circulating among the gods about Daishikan's possible successor. I heard that your name has been considered to succeed Daishikan. Is that true? No. Well, I had some conversations with Daishikan about training, but I never thought it would be about becoming his successor. But, Dad, you realize this is huge, right? Becoming Daishikan's successor is a huge responsibility. I know, Gohan. But I think I still have a lot to learn, you know? This succession thing is something that is beyond my current capabilities. <laughs> you may be modest, Dad, but we all know how amazing you are. And maybe that's what they see in you. Who knows, Gohan? Maybe it's really time for me to expand my horizons. <laughs> As the two continue their conversation, news of Goku's possible succession spreads across the universe, creating a buzz among the gods and angels. The idea of a Saiyan as Daishikan's successor is unprecedented and for some, worrying. Meanwhile, somewhere in the far reaches of the cosmos, Daishikan watches the developing situation with interest. His mysterious smile suggests that he perhaps planned everything from the beginning, testing not only Goku's strength but also his wisdom and leadership abilities. The fate of Universe 7 and possibly the entire universe is in the hands of Goku, a simple Saiyan. Simple Saiyan warrior whose power seems to transcend not only the limits of his own universe, but also the expectations of the gods. As Goku and Gohan discuss Goku's possible cosmic destiny, a bright light begins to manifest on Earth. All of Z-Warriors turn to the source of this light, surprised by Daishikun's appearance. Congratulations, Warrior of Universe 7. You have faced a formidable threat and preserved cosmic order. The Z-Warriors, still recovering from the battle, look at Daishikun with admiration and respect. The presence of such a divine being among them is something unusual. Daishikan? What brings you here? I have come to recognize the exceptional courage and skill you have demonstrated. It's not every day that I see mortals resisting such a colossal threat. Daishikan walks among the Z warriors, watching each of them carefully. Goku in particular. Your powers are beyond what I imagined. You have proven yourself to be a remarkable warrior. Goku, still humble, stretches his head. Aw, thank you, Daishikan. I just did what I thought needed to be done. <laughs> it is exactly that mentality that leads me to my next observations. As some of you may have heard, there are rumors about the possibility of a successor to my position. Goku... Your power is unquestionable. But what really impresses me is your understanding that strength alone is not enough. You demonstrated wisdom and compassion. <clears throat> Everyone reacts with surprise and respect. Becoming Daishikan's successor is a monumental task. It requires not just strength, but the ability to guide and protect the entire multiverse. And Goku, I see that potential for you. What? The news silences everyone present. While Daishikan continues to talk about the importance of cosmic balance and the responsibility that falls on the shoulders of the chosen successor. As the Z fighters absorb these words, the fate of Goku and Universe 7 seems to be more intertwined with cosmic events than ever before. What does the future hold for Goku and his companions? The answer will be revealed as the cosmos unlocks its secrets. Divine Intrigues Viewers and Wees on a Planet of Destruction As Goku and the Z Fighters are praised by Daishikana on the Planet of Destruction, Beerus and Wees begin to feel the reverberations of recent events. A tense atmosphere fills the air as they watch the universe unfold before them. Please, something is very wrong. I feel a strange stirring in the multiverse. 
And it's not just because of Daishikan's presence around here. Oh. Huh. Oh. You are right, Lord Beerus. It seems that Daishikan's decisions are causing magnificent changes throughout the cosmos. And this successor thing again? Why would he consider mortals for such a high position? Oh, we cannot underestimate Goku's achievements, Lord Beerus. He may be a Saiyan, but his achievements exceed expectations. That is true. But I don't know if the strongest Saiyan is the right choice to be Daishikun's successor. <laughs> what is it, Whis? Your laughs are intriguing. I'm sorry, Lord Beerus. It's just... Perhaps Daishi can see something in Goku that goes beyond what we can understand at the moment. I hope they're making the right choices at the highest levels. The balance of the universe is at stake, goddammit! As Beerus and Whis continues to discuss the implications of Daishikan's decisions, the universe prepares for the challenge that awaits. The fate of the gods, angels, and mortals intertwine in unexpected ways. And only time will reveal the consequences of such cosmic events. As Goku and Beerus continue their intense battle, Whis approached Vegeta, who was closely watching the fight. Whis, with his usual enigmatic smile, addressed Vegeta. So, Vegeta, it looks like Goku's transformation is surprising even Beerus, right? Well, Daishikun has expressed interest in witnessing this newfound power. What do you think about us going to the Celestial Palace after this fight? Huh? Hmm. Right. It might be interesting. Besides, maybe I can find some ways to raise my power. Said Vegeta, intrigued by the idea of meeting the Grand Priest and also exploring more about Goku's potential, agreed with a nod. <laughs> Very well, Vegeta. Let's take this opportunity to expand our horizons. As the fight continued, Goku and Beerus were increasingly immersed in their titanic combat. The fate of the universe seemed to hang over in his every move. And curiosity about Goku's new transformation only increased among the spectators, including Whis, Vegeta, and the expectant celestial audience. Beerus, after a brief moment of pause in the battle, looked at Goku with a slight smile, recognizing the evolution that the Saiyan had achieved. <laughs> you have evolved considerably, Goku! Now, however, there's still a long way to go. Come on! Show me how much you can improve! Exclaimed Beerus, raising his key to even more impressive levels. <laughs> you asked for it, Beerus! The intensity of the fight increased exponentially, with Goku and Beerus unleashing powers that shook not only the planet of destruction, but reverberated throughout Universe 7. Whis watched intently, aware that this battle would not only test Goku's limits, but also reveal a new level of power for Beerus. Meanwhile, an intrigued Vegeta was increasingly eager to test his own limits and discover what awaited him in the Celestial Palace. The tension in the universe was palpable, and everyone was waiting to see how far the Super Saiyan powers and gods of destruction could go. The pulsing energy of the powerful attack was palpable, and even Beerus, the god of destruction, felt immense pressure at the impending collision. Beerus, however, was undeterred. With a confident smile, he crossed his arms in front of him, forming a barrier of golden energy to defend himself from the impending impact. The clash between the two powers created a shockwave that spread across the entire planet, causing cracks on the surface. Goku, maintaining his focus, concentrated even more energy into the gigantic Kamehameha, determined to test Beerus' limits. The intense battle continued, and everyone watched with fixed gaze, marveling at the grandeur of the powers involved. Whis, watching with usual serenity, commented to Vegeta, This battle is reaching extraordinary levels. Truly a masterpiece made by Goku and Beerus. 
And they are exploring the limits. New limits. And the entire universe seems to feel the magnitude of this confrontation. I want to reach those limits too, Whis. I will become stronger. Not only to surpass Kakarot, but to protect our universe. But as Goku and Beerus continue their intense battle, the fate of Universe 7 was about to be rewritten by the unparalleled powers that were awakening. Goku, breathing heavily, began to feel the effects of exhaustion after delivering the powerful gigantic Kamehameha. The intensity of this new form, Ultra Super Saiyan 5, had consumed an immense amount of energy. Beerus, still maintaining his confident posture, looked at Goku with a smirk. You certainly tried your best, Goku. This new transformation is impressive, but it still has limits. <coughs> You're right, Lord Beerus. I still have a lot to learn about how to fully control this form. But... Damn it. It was an ex it was an incredible experience. You are surely getting stronger, Goku. But don't underestimate the challenges that still lie ahead. The multiverse is vast, and there are always more powerful opponents. The journey of enhancements never ends, Lord Beerus. Each challenge overcomes leads to new discoveries. Goku, you have achieved something remarkable, truly, but mastery of this transformation will come with time and training, of course. Hm. You can count on me, Whis. Whew. I still have a lot to achieve, don't I? <laughs> and if there's anything I've learned, it's that overcoming one limits is the true essence of being a Saiyan. Still on the planet of destruction, the dust settled. Revealing the scene after the intense battle. As Goku recovered, the prospect of new challenges and discoveries drove his determination. Beerus, still keeping his appraising gaze on Goku, nodded his head in approval. You did a great job, Goku. This transformation is truly amazing, and I'm sure it's just the beginning of your true potential. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Beerus. I still have a lot to explore with this form, but I'm determined to master it. Remember, Goku, continuous improvement is crucial. Now, how about some rest? Right? Rest? Training with this new form requires a balance between effort and recovery, after all. He is right, Goku. Rest and recover your energy. The multiverse is vast, and who knows what challenges await us in the future. Goku nodded and, following Whis's advice, sat back to regain his strength. The trial remained on the planet Beerus, knowing that each battle was an opportunity for growth. Vegeta, closely observing Goku's training and his new transformation, approached Goku with a challenging look. <laughs> Kakarot, don't think you're the only one who can achieve this control. I'm the prince of all science, and I can also master this Ozaru form. Remember our battle. I still have consciousness over my Ozaru form. Oh, that's right, Vegeta. Hey, how about we train together and see how far we can take our powers? After all, if I can do it, I'm sure you can do too. <clears throat> Don't underestimate the power of a prince, Kakarot. I will show you that I can control this form as well as you. Hmm. <laughs> Whis, who was observing the interaction between the two Saiyans, intervened with his characteristic wisdom. Now, boys, training together can be beneficial for the both of you. Healthy competition between you can boost the growth of your powers. And so, Goku and Vegeta decided to join forces to master control over the Ozaru form and explore how far they could take this newfound power. As Goku and Vegeta continued their training on the planet of destruction, Whis and Beerus watched from afar. Whis, with his ability to predict warrior's potential, commented to Beerus. These two Saiyans have a remarkable path ahead of them. There is still so much more power to be unlocked within them. 
Do you still think they can get even stronger, Whis? They're already an impressive level. Oh, remember, Lord Beerus, the power of a Saiyan is almost limitless when they have the motivation. And now, with this new Ozer reform and control, hmm, they have opened the doors to incredible possibilities. Believe me, their strength challenge has only just begun. Then we have a long way ahead, don't we? <laughs> Without a doubt, Lord Beerus. These sands are destined to reach heights even they cannot imagine. I look forward to seeing what the future holds for Universe 7. Meanwhile, Goku and Vegeta, unaware of the conversation between Whis and Beerus, continue their training, determined to take their powers to even higher levels. Universe 7 was about to witness the emergence of Saiyan warriors who would emerge the limits of what was considered possible. In the Heavenly Palace of Zenosama, the Grand Priest, Daishikan, reflected deeply on the vast multiverse. Sitting on his heavily throne, he contemplated the efforts and achievements of mortals in the different universes. Daishikan, with his golden eyes that transcended time and space, observed every action of beings in every corner of the multiverse. He could see the constant struggle for survival, the quest for excellence and the emerging power that was born from determined hearts. As he contemplated, an expression of satisfaction and perhaps a touch of surprise crossed the Grand Prix's serene face. The incredible journey of Goku, Vegeta, Broly and other extraordinary warriors caught his attention in a special way. Mortals are fascinating, right? Their abilities to overcome limits Seek power and challenge even the gods is a unique quality. Daishikan was aware of every epic battle, every sacrifice, and every victory that shaped the destiny of the universes. He admitted the resilience of mortals in the face of adversity, the way they come together in times of crisis and how, through their journeys, they transcended their own limits. In his thinking, Daishikan considered that perhaps the true power of mortals lay not only in physical strength or powerful techniques, but rather in the tireless flame that burned within each of them. The flame of determination, friendship, and the desire to protect what they loved. With a calm sigh, Daishikan remained attentive to the multiverse ready to witness the next chapter of the incredible stories unfolding in the worlds of mortals. His gaze, still reflecting divine wisdom, was filled with respect for the unique and unparalleled journey of the beings that inhabited the universes. Daishika, the Grand Priest, addressed to the King of All, Zenosama, in the majestic Heavenly Palace. He was aware that mortals in several universes were reaching new heights of power, and felt the need to share this observation with the Supreme Ruler. Face to face with Zenosama's imposing presence, Daishikan portrayed himself respectfully before expressing himself. Oh, great king of all, I have noticed a remarkable phenomenon in the universes. Mortals, as time passes, are reaching levels of strength that surprises even me, a divine observer. Hmm? So, mortals are getting stronger. That's interesting. Show me, show me! Daishikan raised his hand, revealing holographic images that depicted several epic battles across the universes. From Goku and his companions in Universe 7 to other exceptional warriors in distant universes, the images show the power of mortals on the rise. As you can see, my king, their journeys are marked by sacrifices, rigorous training, and overcoming challenges that often seem insurmountable. The fire within them, this determination, is elevating their powers to new heights. Oh, it looks like fun! They're getting really strong! I want to see more, Daishikan! Daishikan continued to present stunning battle scenes detailing how mortals, often with extraordinary inner strength, were shaping the course of the universes. 
It is quite intriguing, my king. Mortals may be becoming a force that transcends divine expectations. We must keep an eye on what the future holds. Zenosama, while maintaining his playful nature, contemplated the information provided by Daishikan. Hmm. It will be interesting to see what happens. Let's keep watching, Daishikan. With that order, Daishikan remained attentive to developments, while Zenosama, the king of all, eagerly awaited more excitement in the universes he ruled. After sharing the vision of mortals becoming increasingly powerful with Zenosama, Daishikan the Grand Priest felt the need to highlight one mortal in peculiar, Universe 7's Goku. Now look at this, my king. There is something even more remarkable. Among these warriors, there is a warrior whose purity and of heart and strength are truly astonishing. His name is Goku. He is from Universe 7. Goku! That boy who likes to fight and always try to get stronger, right? Oh, I like him! Show me! Daishikan once again raised his hand, projecting holographic images that highlighted Goku's exploits. From his first battles on Earth to his fights on cosmic scales, the Grand Priest illustrated the Saiyan's incredible journey. Goku is a unique being. His ability to overcome himself at crucial moments his incessant search for getting stronger challenges and his purity of heart are truly remarkable. Even among mortals, he stands out. Ah, uh, he seems like a lot of fun! He seems also like a nice guy. Hey, Daishikun, can I meet him? No, uh, if you wish, my king. I can organize a meeting between you and Goku. It will be a unique experience for both of you. Yes, yes, do it, Daishikun! Let's see what Goku is capable of! With this decision, Daishikan began to preparing the meeting between the King of All and the mortal warrior whose power and purity had attracted attention even on the celestial planes. The universe was full of surprises, and this meeting promised to be one of them. When sharing Goku's story with Zenosama, Daishikan couldn't help but notice the similarity between the mortal Saiyan and his first celestial war Saiyan friend, Yamushi. You know, my king, as I watched Goku's exploits, I couldn't help but notice a striking resemblance to someone. Someone I once knew. A notable Saiyan who fought valiantly in the Celestial War long ago. His name was... Yamoshi. Yamoshi? Oh, I remember him, Daishikan. He was strong, but he always sought justice. Are you saying Goku is like him? Yes, my great king. Goku's determination to protect others, his search for challenges, and above all, his purity of heart reminded me very much of the noble Yamoshi. It seems that, even among mortals, the essence of saints remains. So Goku is like a spiritual successor to Yamoshi. That's really interesting. I can't wait to meet him. It'll certainly be a unique encounter, my great king. I'm sure Goku will be honored to meet you and share his experiences. Thus, the connection between Goku, the mortal warrior, and the Yamushi, the celestial war Saiyan, became a bridge between the past and the present, connecting the universes in surprising ways. As Daishikan shared Goku's story with Zenosama, his mind traveled to the distant past. To the days when he and Yamushi were battle companions in the celestial war against the demonic gods. Daishikan's face lit up with memories and nostalgia. Amid the chaos of celestial warfare, Daishikan and Yamushi fought side by side. Their powers combining in a dance of destruction against the demonic gods. Both shared a common goal, protecting the balance of the universe and ensuring peace between the divine realms. Yamushi, with his burning flame and unwavering determination, always led the Saiyans with bravery. Daishikan, with his serenity and angelic abilities, complemented the Saiyan warrior's abilities. Together, they formed a formidable alliance. As the battles raged, Yamushi displayed a remarkable purity of heart, a rare quality among Saiyans. Daishikan, the silent observer, admired the straight in Yamushi, becoming a respected friend over time. Now back in the present, 
Daishikan was smiling at Zenosama, still absorbed in his memories. Yamushi was a remarkable warrior, my great king. His determination and purity of heart were unmatched. And now seeing Goku, I see traces of Yamushi's valiant spirit. <laughs> it's amazing how connections between beings extend through time. I look forward to seeing how Goku will carry on Yamushi's legacy. Daishikan agreed. Aware that the cycle of time continued to weave its stories, uniting past, present, and future into a cosmic narrative. Faced with Zenosama's curiosity, Daishikan smiled, appreciating the opportunity to share a piece of cosmic history. <sighs> the First Celestial War. It was a time of great challenge for all the divine beings. Demonic gods, evil beings who sought destruction and chaos threatened the stability of the universe. In those days, Yamushi, the valiant Saiyan I mentioned before, led the Saiyan warriors with unparalleled courage. They were known for their strength and determination, traits that became key to victory against the demonic gods. Zenosama kept on hearing more, sitting on his heavily throne. Daishikun continued to paint an epic portrait of celestial battles. Highlighting moments of heroism, sacrifice, and the union of diverse divine races. Xenosama listened attentively, fascinated by the narrative. The divine realms joined forces, creating unlikely alliances to face this imminent threat. It was a time when bonds between celestial beings were forged in the furnace of conflict, and many friendships emerged even in the midst of adversity. And how was the Celestial War finally won? The Grand King Zeno tilted his head, taking in every detail of the story. Daishikun smiled, remembering the decisive moment. It was a combination of courage, strategy, and above all, the determination to preserve order in the multiverse. In the end, the unity of all the Celestial races proved to be stronger than any threat. It's amazing to think on the past shapes the present and future. Thank you for sharing the story with me, Daishikan. <laughs> Indeed. The events of the past are like stars in the sky, each carrying in its own light and meaning. And so, the universe continues to write its stories, one after another. Daishikan closed his eyes, diving into the depths of his memories. It was a time immemorial when the galaxy was immersed in increasing chaos. Daishikan at that time was not the Grand Priest. He was just a celestial being, observing the vastness of the universe. On one such occasion when the cosmic sky was painted with the flames of celestial war, Daishikan met Yamushi for the first time. Both were on opposite camps, but something about the Saiyan's courageous aura caught Daishikan's attention. On the celestial battlefield went where the stars collided and deities waged the epic wars. Daishikan approached the Yamushi. The light of battle illuminated their faces as they faced each other. Yamushi, the brave Saiyan. Daishikan said, his voice resonating like a heavenly melody. You face a war that threatens all existence. What drives you to fight with such determination? <laughs> I fight for my people, for the races that cannot defend themselves. I fight for a universe where light can prevail over darkness. Yamushi's words rang in Daishikan's ears, touching a sensitive fiber in his heavenly heart. He saw not just a valiant warrior, but someone who embodied the essence of justice and courage. Daishikan, not yet high priest, contemplated the depth of Yamushi's commitment. <laughs> Your mission is loyal and noble, Yamushi. Perhaps amid the chaos, we can find an understanding that transcends the boundaries of war. The two warriors from different worlds shared a look of recognition. A battle raged around them. A brief truce was formed between them. A fleeting respite in the never-ending cosmic dance of war and fate. Yamushi, with his tenacious stance, 
responded to Daishikan on that cosmic battlefield. I never imagined that Saiyans and Angels could find common ground. But sometimes, the need to preserve existence transcends our differences. Daishikan, looking at the stars that witnessed the Celestial War, suddenly agreed. War sets us on unexpected paths, Yamushi. In the heat of battle, unlikely alliances can form to preserve the balances of the cosmos. Yamushi raised his fist, bathed in the light of fighting, and said, Whether Saiyan or Angel, we will share the responsibility of protecting what is precious to us. We all do that. If this alliance serves that purpose, then we will fight side by side. What do you say? <laughs> From this unlikely union between Saiyans and Angels, a spark of hope emerged in the midst of the darkness. Together, they faced the demonic forces that threatened to consume existence, each contributing their unique abilities to the joint effort. In the heat of the Celestial War, Daishikan and Yamushi found themselves cornered by a race of dragon gods, ancient beings who personify the primordial forces of the universe. Dragon gods were immensely powerful beings whose existence transcended the very nature of the cosmos. When facing these formidable adversaries, Daishikan and Yamushi combined their skills, combining the dexterity of an angel with the indomitable fury of a Sagan. Under the intense light of the stars, the dragon gods unleashed their powers, unleashing cosmos storms that challenged even the mightiest warriors. Daishikan, with a celestial grace, manipulated divine energies to create shields of light while Yamushi channeled Saiyan Ki to resist brutal attacks. The battle unfolded in an epic spectacle, with reality shaking under the clash of titans. At the height of the conflict, when hope seemed fleeting, Daishikun and Yamushi, in a moment of pure harmony, merged their powers into a unique technique. A blast of divine and Saiyan energy erupted, enveloping the dragon gods in dazzling light. The dragon gods, momentarily weakened by the transcendental fusion, retreated, allowing Daishikan and Yamushi to recover. However, this momentary victory was not the end, but rather the prelude to even greater challenges that awaited the unlikely allies. The Celestial War was far from over and the fate of the universes remained suspended in a fragile balance. After the intense battle against the dragon gods, Yamushi, the legendary Saiyan, looked at Daishikan with renewed respect. The universe was silent, and both warriors, even though they were races of different cultures, shared a deep understanding about the need for cooperation to preserve existence. Yamushi, taking a deep breath, broke the silence. Daishikan, you have the potential to be the supreme king of all angels. Your unique combinations of celestial grace and divine power. <laughs> it's something I've never seen in another being. Daishikan, normally reserved, welcomed Yamushi's words with an expression of contemplation. He had been the high priest for a long time, serving the high kings. But the idea of leading all the angels was something he had have never have seriously considered. Your vision is quite intriguing, Yamushi. But my role as a high priest is to serve the high kings and ensure balance in the universes. <laughs> I get it. However, remembering that the universe is dynamic, as in the nature of our own existences, perhaps in the future you will see that leading the angels is a path that balance demands. The two warriors remained silent staring at the vast cosmos before them. Meanwhile, the stars witnessed the events that would shape the fate of the universes, a cosmic tapestry woven together by the unlikely union of an angel and a Sagan. With a future held for Daishikan, only time could tell. As the days passed during the Celestial War, Yamushi delved deeper into his own power, exploring the limits of his Saiyan existence. The celestial battlefield became a spectacle of energy, with Yamoshi emanating an intense light as he raised his power to heights never before achieved. His hair, already golden, 
began to pulse with a celestial luminosity, reflecting the fusion of his Saiyan nature with divine energy. Yamushi, now imbued with the power of a Saiyan god, radiated an aura that echoed throughout the battlefield, inspiring allies and foes alike. The Dragon Gods, who were once an overwhelming threat, now retreated before the magnificence of the Saiyan God. The battle began to tilt in the Divine Warrior's favor, with Yamushi leading the charge and showing the true extent of his new power. At the height of his transformation, Yamushi unleashed Saiyan combat techniques combined with the Divine Energy flowing through his veins. His fists were like meteors, and every movement was executed with supernatural precision. The Saiyan God, now the beckon of hope for his people, inspired others to reach previously unimaginable levels of power. Daishikun, watching closely, recognized the magnitude of the power that Yamushi had achieved. The Celestial War, which had once seemed like a hopeless battle, was now tilted in favor of the defenders of the universe. However, Daishikun couldn't help but wonder about the price Yamushi was paying for this transcendental power. After all, it is a mortal using divine energy. The fate of the universe was now intertwined with the power of a Saiyan God, and as Yamushi continued his ascension, the heavens echoed with the magnitude of the celestial war that would shape the course of cosmic events. Upon realizing that the celestial war had reached an impasse, and that the only way to achieve peace was by directly confronting the dragon god Zarama. Yamoshi approached Daishikun with a serious and determined look. Daishikun, if we are ready to end this war and restore order to the universe, we must go to the very heart of the enemy. We must invade the palace of the dragon god Zarama and face him directly, declared Yamoshi, determination reflected in his eyes, golden. Daishikun, after a brief reflection, agreed to Yamoshi's proposal. You're right, Yamoshi. If Zarama is the source of the power that sustains the Dragon Gods, defeating him could be the key to ending this war. Let's prepare for this onslaught. The two divine warriors began to strategize, gathering allies and planning the attack on the palace of the Dragon God Zarama. The journey promised to be dangerous as directly facing such a powerful divine being would require not only strength, but also cunning. As they prepared for the mission, Yamoshi and Daishikun strengthened their bones, becoming formidable allies in the fight for peace. While the divine warriors prepared for the invasion of the palace of the dragon god Zarama, in the confines of the dragon kingdom, a clandestine meeting was taking place between the dragons, ancestral beings who held the power to shape the universe. Several dragons of varying sizes and colors gathered in an imposing chamber, where murmurs of conspiracy echoed among them. Among the shadows, the dragons' flaming eyes glowed with ambition, and their booming voices announced a sinister plan. The time of submission to the gods are coming to an end. It is time for the dragons to take control of the universe, declared Sharon, the divine dragon with a powerful voice that reverberated throughout the chamber. The other dragons agreed, each expressing their desire to transcend the cosmic supremacy. Dragon King Zarama, who ruled everyone, remained silent, watching the meeting with his wise eyes. We must unite and show the gods that we are not simple pawns in their divine games. Together, the dragons will conquer the cosmic order and become the true masters of the universe proclaimed Purunga, the eternal god, in his deep voice. As the dragons plotted the conquest of the universe, the fates of the divine warriors Yamoshi and Daishikun were about to intertwine with this epic conspiracy, where the fight for cosmic supremacy would unfold in a battle that would challenge the foundations of the universe itself. In front of the majestic entrance of the dragon kingdom, Yamoshi, the Saiyan god, raised his hand, preparing to enter. The gigantic, ornate doors began to creak as they slowly opened, revealing a dark and mysterious hallway. A gust of hot air escaped from within, carrying with it the imposing aura of the dragons. Upon entering, Yamushi felt the crushing pressure of the dragon kingdom. The darkness was replaced 
by a ravelly landscape where golden clouds floated between ancient stones' columns. On a high throne, Zarama, the dragon god, the dragon king, watched with his wise eyes. The other dragons, including Sharon and Peronga, were present, each emanating a magnificent presence. Yamusha remained impassive, staring at the dragons with determination. His black hair moved gently, driven by an invisible force pulsing from his body. Yamushi, Saiyan God, what brings you to the kingdom of the dragons? Asked Zarama, his voice resounding like a distant thunder. I am here to end the celestial war and begin a new era, where gods and mortals coexist in harmony. I will no longer accept dragons manipulating the destiny of the universe. Yamushi proclaimed, standing up with confidence. The dragons exchanged intrigued looks, while Zarama remained on his throne, contemplative. The fate of the universe hung in the balance, and revolution was about to unfold in the heavenly halls of the Dragon Kingdom. Yamushi, surrounded by a divine aura, rose to the level of a Saiyan God again. His dark hair flowed around him, while his eyes shone with the intensity of a star. He turned to Daishikan, the Grand Priest, who watched with a serene expression. The time has come to end this war and create a new path for all beings in the universe, declared Yamushi with a firm and determined voice. Daishikan next to Yamushi nodded. Together, they advanced through the heavily corridors of the Dragon Kingdom. As they moved, the dragons watched with surprise and curiosity, while Shenlong and Purunga murmured among themselves. Yamushi and Daishikan's arrival at the main hall was marked by a tense silence. Zarama, the Dragon King, remained on his throne, but his expression now denoted a certain interest in the boldness of the visitors. Zarama, the time for interfering in the fate of mortals has come to an end. The war between gods and dragons must cease! Daishikan proclaimed with a voice that resounded throughout the room. Zarama watched them for a moment before responding. Saiyan gods and angels on a joint mission. <laughs> this is truly unusual. But the final decision is up to me. At that moment, Yamoshi prepared himself for what was to come. The celestial corridors echoed with the tension of the impending battle as the fate of the universe hung in the balance. The battle between the Saiyan God, the Grand Priest Daishikan, and the Dragon of the Universe unfolded with overwhelming intensity. Yamushi, in his Saiyan God form, delivered powerful blows against the smaller dragons, while Daishikan faced challenges commensurate with the celestial stature. Zarama, the Dragon King, remained seated on his throne, observing the clash with a calm that contrasted with the turmoil around him. The celestial room was suffused with divine energy and fierce roars, creating a unique atmosphere. Yamushi, utilizing his incomparable strength, determinedly advanced towards Arama. His every step sent shockwaves through the hall, pushing back the dragons that tried to stop him. The great priest, Daishikan, in turn, faced dragons of different levels, demonstrating his mastery in divine combat. As Yamushi and Daishikan approached the Dragon King, Zarama rose from his throne with a majestic presence. Saiyan God, why do you dare challenge the cosmic balance? The order of things was established long ago. We are here to end the war and bring about a new understanding between gods and mortals. Together, we can forge a future different than the others. The fighting intensified as Ayamoshi and Daishikan faced increasing resistance. Each strike was a manifestation of divine power, and the fate of the universe was being decided in that epic moment. The balance between gods and dragons was on the verge of a monumental transformation. Zarama, the Dragon King, revealed his true magnitude of power, a divine presence that eclipsed even the formidable Daishikan. His eyes emanated a transcendental light and his heavenly aura enveloped the hall like a cosmic current. Yamushi, 
Despite his Saiyan God form began to feel Zarama's overwhelming pressure. The fight became increasingly challenging, and Daishikan was on the verge of exhaustion, resisting only by his immense celestial strength. Zarama spoke powerful words. Saiyan God! Gods alike! Angel! You are mere pawns in this cosmic order, in this cosmic dance! Your aspirations for change may be noble, but cosmic balance is eternal! At this crucial moment, an intense light began to emanate from Daishikan. His celestial body shone with a renewed divine radiance. It felt like he was connecting to a deeper source of power. Yamushi, upon noticing the change in Daishikan, felt a new wave of hope. With renewed effort, they joined forces against the Rama, forming a temporary alliance to challenge the god ruler. The battle reached a new level of intensity, with devastating attacks being launched from all sides. Each action shaped the fate of the universe, and the conclusion of this epic confrontation was yet to be revealed. Yamushi, at a peak moment, reached the transcendental state of Ultra Instinct. His body radiated a silver light, and his speed and reflexes reached unimaginable levels. Holding Zarama tightly, he looked at Daishikan and said, Daishikan, this is our moment! Any ceiling attack on both of us is the only way to preserve the cosmic balance and stop Zarama from wrecking further havoc! Come on! Do it! Daishikan, understanding the urgency of the situation, focused his celestial energies and unleashed a specific ceiling attack. A sphere of golden light formed between his hands as he prepares to perform the feat. Yamushi, still maintaining his Ultra Instinct form, guided Zarama's body into the attack's trajectory. The sphere of golden light enveloped the three powerful beings, beginning to emit a vibration that reverberated across the dimensional planes. Zarama, your ambitions of conquest are over! Your power will be sealed, and cosmic peace will be restored. Goodbye, Toshikun. Declared Yamushi with determination. The ceiling sphere continued to contract, encapsulating the three protagonists of this cosmic saga. The fate of the universe hung in the balance, as intense light announced the outcome of a battle that transcended the limits of space and time. With the ceiling complete, Daishikan's body began to gradually recover, his injuries healed, and the celestial aura that surrounded him regained its characteristic serenity. However, Zarama and Yamushi remained motionless in the dimensional prison created by the powerful Sealy attack. Time continued, and as the universes returned to their normal course, Daishikan closely monitored the cosmic prison. He knew that, even sealed, Zarama and Yamushi's powers continued to exert significant influence. The challenge now was to find a way to deal with this unique situation. Zarama, Yamushi, you are contained, but your destinies are intertwined with the fabric of the cosmos, and as long as I exist as the High Priest, I will keep watch over the Celestial Prison, declared Daishikan, pondering the next steps to take. Meanwhile, in the confines of the sealed dimension, Zarama and Yamushi remained asleep, their combined energies forming a peculiar harmony. Cosmic peace, although momentarily restored, remained fragile. And the fate of these legendary beings remained shrouded in mystery. The universe continued its course, and the scales of cosmic balance swayed in an eternal dance between light and dark. Millennium unfolded, and Daishikan remained the high priest and faithful protector of Xenosama. Under his guidance, the universe flourished in harmony, and peace reigned between gods and mortals. The legacy of celestial warfare and the imprisonment of Zarama and Yamushi became part of cosmic mythology passed down through the ages. Daishikan, with his unparalleled wisdom, guided the gods in maintaining universal balance. His broad vision and commitment to stability provided a period of tranquility the universe had not known in ages. However, 
he never forgot about the lessons of celestial warfare and the importance of keeping constant watch over the extremes of power. Xenosama, fully trusting Daishikan, devoted himself to his role as supreme ruler with confidence. The two formed a partnership that transcended mere hierarchy, a mutual understanding that peace and cooperation were the essence of existence. Meanwhile, the sealed dimension maintained its silence, and the combined powers of Yamoshi and Zarama rested in a state of stillness. Daishikan, with the responsibility of maintaining this restraint, fulfilled his role with devotion. Thus, the millennia stretched, history unfolded, and the universe prospered under the zeal of the Grand Priest and the balanced reign of Zenosama. Yet, in the vast panorama of time, the shadow of uncertainty always loomed, reminding everyone the cosmic balance was a delicate dance between ancient forces and intertwined destinies. Zenosama, although the supreme ruler of the multiverse, often liked to entertain himself with fascinating stories. Upon hearing about the epic saga of Yamoshi and the Celestial War, the little Celestial King Zenosama was amazed. His eyes sparkled with childish curiosity as he listened to every detail of the narrative. At the end of the story, Zenosama, still excited, looked at Daishikan and exclaimed, That's the most incredible thing I've ever heard! Yamoshi was very strong, wasn't he? Daishikan, always calm and respectful, nodded with a slight smile. <laughs> Indeed, Zenosama. Yamushi's legacy is remarkable, and his strength and determination has left a mark on cosmic history. You know, Daishikan, I think Goku may have inherited that warrior spirit from Yamushi. Let's go, Goku, and ask him about it. With a snap of his fingers, Goku appeared before Zenosama and Daishikan, visibly surprised. Hey, what's going on here? Why was I called so suddenly? Zenosama, with a beaming smile, told Goku the story of Yamoshi and his incredible journey. Goku, always excited about challenges and new stories, listened attentively. When the narrative came to an end, Zenosama looked at Goku with a sparkle in his eyes. So, Goku, what do you think? Could it be that you inherit Yamoshi's spirit? <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but I love a good fight, and I always try to battle myself. If Yamoshi was like that, I think we have something in common. <laughs> Zenosama applauded excitedly, and Daishikan watched with the interaction between ruler and the warrior. Aware that even in the most relaxed moments, destinies and legacies intertwined in mystery ways on the vast cosmic stage. To be continued. So hey, what do you believe in and what do you imagine about all of this? Don't you forget to click the like button, subscribe here to the channel, then hit the bell so you don't miss any videos. And that's it for today. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>